from San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge and Sutro Tower to Seattle's Space Needle and the Empire State Building, architectural models rarely look as elegant in their simplicity and construction as the kits designed by Studio for Metropolitan Craft. Model maker Larry Srinivasan takes iconic buildings and landmarks from the Bay Area and beyond and shrinks them down into beautiful laser-cut miniatures that capture the essence of their structure and construction. We recently visited Larry's San Francisco workshop to learn how he designs his architectural model kits and see his experiments in miniatures fabrication and joinery. I studied architecture in art school and uh, worked in some architecture firms for a number of years. And then I, I kind of got tired of working at a computer every day and I wanted to build things. So um, I got a job as a woodworker in a, in a cabinet shop. And uh, he taught me basically all the woodworking techniques and joints and things. And I really enjoyed it. And um, I, I just liked working with my hands and working with wood a lot. So. Uh, then I went back to architecture again, and then discovered model making, which was a, a great kind of combination of woodworking and architecture. So uh, I started doing professional model making for a while. Yeah. And at the scale, and yeah. these are many different scales, of course, because these buildings are all different sizes, you know, yeah. some hundreds of feet tall, yeah. you're working with materials that are very accessible and familiar, whether it's corrugated cardboard yeah. or eighth inch thick I like sheet using, ply. I like using sort of humble materials too, like like plywood and cardboard and, and sort of elevating them by, by cutting them really precisely and, and making them into something really special. Yeah, I was um, interested in, you know, how to how to de depict a, a building. Um, I, I wanted to depict it in more of a structural way, rather than having a, a skin um, of windows to show the floor plates, because that's kind of how we associate this design with the Transamerica building. It makes it more fun to put together too, when it's um, a series of plates. So each plate is, is representative of a floor. So there's actually um, 44 floors in the, in the tower. The, the bottom, the base of it is, is a, a few stories high um, and it has a truss system, which is, it was all built for earthquake safety. So there's this large truss at the bottom and just tapers up to the top into a point but it's definitely an iconic San Francisco building and it's a beautiful structure. Uh, people instantly recognize it as part of San Francisco. I heard the real estate up here is pretty expensive. <laughs> There's an elegance in your work, uh, just going to like the Sutro yeah. Tower where you, you are layering, it looks like, you know, yeah. two sheets of eighth inch ply but there are interesting angles here. Like Sutro yeah. has, it bows out at the bottom, yeah. it's a triangular shape, yeah. but the way you've designed, you know, the, the centerpieces to yeah. interlock and press fit, right. that right. must have taken a lot of trial and error. Yeah, it did. Um, in, in concept, I knew that it would work to have this kind of a joint with um, a double lap joint, I guess they call them. But it's, um, it took a, a few tries to get the, the geometry right and to get the sizes right. I, had to, I, was, I was using a lot of my architectural training to do the, 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 the drafting behind it to get it right. But uh, the good thing is once you figure it out in, in 2D and a good CAD file, um, it's your, your set and you can, you can cut them as many times as you, as you need to. So lasers do vary a little bit between machines. Um, mm -hmm. The curve size, which is the, the size of the cut, uh, how, much the, how much wood it takes out, uh, that varies a little bit. But um, generally, it's, very con it's an extremely consistent um, process. And I've really enjoyed getting into the kind of the, the really uh, microscope, <laughs> the, the micro details of it and how it all fits together. 
Yeah, this is actually the only etched brass model that I'm currently making. It's um, it's all made out of a folded brass sheets, and uh, the the parts are all chemically etched. So it comes as a flat sheet about 24 inches wide, and um, it was a great way to to show all the different trusses, the the delicate lines of the trusses, and uh, I tried to capture really as much more it's it's like another level of detail of the tower that you can show um a little the next sort of level of detail uh, for the tower beyond just uh, straight pieces of wood these are all triangular um sections after all the brass work is done it's it's gold basically in color and then i just airbrush all the white parts of it and then tape it off and airbrush the red parts all of those different surfaces are rendered here on that one so that's kind of the the most accurate sutra that i make <laughs> so it's kind of an involved piece it takes a couple of weeks to make it when you look at something like the golden gate bridge the tower yeah. for example uh yeah. there are publicly available blueprints that you can use for yeah. reference but when you're modeling this you know do you look at the way it was put together that steel and then you try to align yeah, your I, pieces in that way as well yeah exactly I, I i try to keep the um the construction of the model in a way as true to the spirit of the 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 original structure as i can um, and really use a lot of the same structural um, qualities. Uh, in the Golden Gate Bridge, it's a, it's a beautiful Art Deco kind of design that uses sort of these layers of layers of veneer on the side, and these are layers of steel, really, in in the original. And um, so uh, it's it's a it's kind of like something I, I like to translate the real structure into a into something that makes sense as a as a scale model too i kind of i kind of i'm attracted to these sort of working structures you know that they're they're kind of these background structures of in in the city that they're not always seen as as objects uh, you know to to look at and but they're they're really beautiful structurally and um so like the scaffolding and the cranes um and they, they, uh, yeah, they have a lot of uh, different details to them that I think adds a lot of visual interest. I noticed on the back wall here, you've put on display the individual pieces uh, that make up some of these kits. Um, are these kind of your explorations in, in yeah. the way you've put these models together? Can you walk me through some of these? Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to do, like I did a few joint studies. When I'm developing a new model, I, I um, first test out all the different connections. And a lot of these joint studies are, are glueless joints, like the, the billboard kit, which you did, um, this one here, I wanted to have people be able to put it together without any glue. So um, I kind of developed a few joinery techniques, I guess you could say to like con connecting a dowel to a piece of plywood with these tiny nipples that bite into the wood and hold it there. So it, it's pretty effective for a model. Um, and another example is like these cables, um, the tongue is just slightly tapered so it it can fit into the hole and, and just snug in there. So, um, so that way it kind of also helps in the case of any kind of variance in the cutting. Um, it gives you a little leeway so that the, the, wood, the wood has a little give to it and it allows it to do that. That's great. And so your <laughs> preference is press fit. And I kind of like it, yeah. Yeah, I'm when you can. Yeah. Um, this gantry model yeah. on the side here, you know, when I first saw it, it looks like a yeah. you know, laser cut, high power laser cut, you know, yeah. aluminum. But you yeah. said this is just like cardstock. It is, yeah. It's just um, simple cardstock that I got from a, a framing mat supplier. Um, and what I liked about it was that it it has the color throughout the thickness. Mm. Um, a lot of 
a lot of cardstock is only colored on the surface, but this one, since I'm cutting through it so many times, I wanted the, the thing to look like a solid material. And, uh, and it, it worked out pretty well. It's, that's probably the lightest weight model that I make. It's, it's, um, it was made actually as a, a promotional gift for um, a real estate development that they're doing around the, uh, in this area of the crane. It's like one of the icons of the city. Yeah. And what's also interesting is that uh, unlike like the billboard here, you're not piecing corners, you're actually bending flat sheets. So yeah. it's, it's a like a living hinge design. Is that what it's called? It is, yeah. It's a living hinge, you could call it. And um, basically using the laser with very uh, low power score lines to just relieve uh, corners so that you can bend it then. And um, it'll, it'll bend a few times eventually you know, if you keep bending it back and forth, it's going to break. But, <laughs> but for but for the purposes of a model, again, it's um, it's pretty effective, and they can stand up to a pretty good amount of abuse. <laughs> I mean, the, the very design itself of yeah. it being this truss work yeah. is supposed to build rigidity and structure to it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. With every new model you do, do you try to explore a different type of joinery? Does it feel like an iterative like process? To, yeah, I like to, every material has its own um, characteristics. And I've tried to experiment around with different materials um, and kind of listen to how, how it wants to be kind of, you know, treated or manipulated or, or designed and like, each each tool in the in the shop has its own um, advantages. Like for example, this I did a series of little towers just to show different processes, and this is just acrylic sheet bending, um, and this is just blocks using the um, wood the wood shop it's using a table saw basically, just showing what kind of different models you can make based on the material and and this is a um, 3d printed one and the 3d printing the advantage is that you can do um, these double curves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i wanted to have a design that sort of exploits the you know advantages of that machine you know and sometimes yeah. even when you're talking about you know wood and paper yeah. it's still mixed media like this yeah. model here of the yeah. hollywood sign you're saying this is a relatively new one but it's yeah. I see corrugated cardboard and some laser cut ply, um, yeah. but also very elegant. I love the kind of topographical look you have here for oh, the thanks. hillside. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it, it took me a while to figure out how to how to do something. I I started the project knowing I wanted to incorporate the three dimensionality of the hill, how the letters sort of navigate this slope, um, and uh, I was looking at a lot of existing Hollywood memorabilia and it's usually a flat um, depiction but uh, in this one you can actually see how the the letters were arranged on the hill according to the slope and uh, um, it, it changes its angles when you look at it in different ways yeah and even the way you have the letters um, pressed into the, the corrugation yeah right you're taking advantage of that too yeah that's um, the corrugation has a was a it, it offered a really nice opportunity to just um, be able to slide the uh, these stakes in and press fit them in. So um, I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> so brilliant! <laughs> like you could have very easily you know 3D printed the side of the hill, right? Or yeah. or use glue. But yeah. the fact that this happy marriage of the material and the scale of the model. Yeah, um, I like it when those kind of things happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of scale, I know you've done this Golden Gate Bridge one tower, and you sell these towers in the you know the Etsy store and the SF yeah. MoMA store, uh, but you also make a full size Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, that's correct. Actually, um, um, I had a store um, approach me about that. I, I was already selling the towers by themselves, and um, a store on uh, Valencia Street asked me if I would consider doing a full span of the bridge and they had a 10 foot or 11 foot uh, store window. So that was sort of the space I had to work with. And so I scaled it up and um, 
design the, the cable structure for that with the uh, with the, the streets and everything kind of plugs together also. Wow, I see some of those pieces yeah. are cut out. Are you in the process of putting one of these together right now? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm just working on it right now, actually. I just laser cut these the other day. It starts with uh, just eighth inch plywood and then I, I pre-finish I pre the wood with international orange and and um, then I do all the laser cutting and then all the assembly after that. So, but um, it th the parts are actually kind of delicate before they're assembled, but once you get the whole structure together, it's actually very strong and it supports itself really well. <laughs> what are the other projects you have kind of percolating in your brain, things that you want to tackle in the architectural yeah. world or, or otherwise? Yeah, I try to keep a, a good, bunch of projects going on right now. Okay, well this is a, a model for a Steinway piano, grand piano, and um, it's all done uh, with laser cut wood and laser cut plastic for the keyboard. Um, I actually measured a piano and made some drawings for it. Uh, there's certain elements of a piano which have to be the same on every piano, but there's some elements that you can also play around with in design. So um, I was looking at this kind of curved motif here and I put it into the, this is the music shelf and, and the legs, I wanted to do sort of like a, a peg with these branches on it, um, give it sort of a round look. And, um, and for the, the prop uh, stick, I, I also wanted to have a curve again because the piano has all these beautiful curves to it. So emphasizing that. And then on the, as another little, maybe acoustic experiment, I was looking at the interior of the lid because that's a reflective surface for the instrument. So I thought maybe this could be a way to spread the sound out or broadcast the sound more. So just looking at different design ideas for uh, p variations on a piano. It's built uh, in a similar way to the, how a piano is built. Um, there's, a, there's a cast iron harp where all the strings, there's a lot of string tension on those. So that's, that's sort of the heart of it and then these curved uh, pieces. All of these, just really great showcase of your wonderful design sense, the elegance in your construction, and for you know people who live in these cities, whether it's San Francisco or Seattle, you know, these are wonderful mementos of the places that they live in. Um, thank you so much for sharing with us thanks your for, process. Well, thanks for coming by, I really appreciate you checking them out. Yeah, it's yeah. so great to meet you, Larry. Nice to meet you too.